Now, if we talk about solving numericals from this unit, then there is just one rule, you can say one law that is going to help you out. And that is law which is very well known to us. It's the law of conservation of energy, right? And this is such a law which we don't only apply in mechanics, but we also apply in uh, thermodynamics, right? First law of thermodynamics is essentially law of conservation of energy itself. We apply this in uh, fluid mechanics, Bernoulli's equation, right? We apply this in heat transfer. So there are a lot of subjects where we apply this basic law of conservation of energy, right? And that basic law itself is sufficient to solve any and all questions from this unit. I'm talking about numericals right now, all right? But there are certain concepts here and there which are somewhat theoretical and if some theoretical question comes then they are going to help you out so we are going to cover them but whenever you see a numerical and uh, that is related to work energy power apply the basic law of conservation of energy what is that it says energy cannot be created it cannot be destroyed it uh, uh, remains constant it but it can change its form and what are the different form of energy we have in mechanics kinetic energy and potential energy so basically the energy will either be in the state of kinetic energy or in the potential energy it will keep on converting between them but it cannot be destroyed it cannot be created right and from the same funda you can also say that whatever is the change of energy between any two states at any given uh, at any two time intervals that change in energy tells that how much work interaction has been done by that body. What I mean to say is, if this body has some energy even at any time uh, instant and at another time instant T2, it has energy E2, right? So difference of this energy E2 minus E1 will tell you how much work interaction this body has done. So the same concept that I, basic concept that I told you initially, that work is transaction of energy. And energy as such is the energy in storage, right? So if you have 20 rupees in your pocket and after two days you have 50 rupees in your pocket. So how much money you have gained or lost that can be easily calculated by taking the difference, right? Same is the funda here. So E1 minus E2 is equal to, is equal to work done by any given body. Now there's one more basic concept of conservative and non-conservative forces okay it's a theoretical concept as such that those forces where the work is not dependent upon the path taken by the body i'm repeating it those forces in which case the work is independent of the path taken it just depends upon the initial and final state those forces are called as conservative forces for example force of gravity if there is a body here and you bring it down here or maybe the body was here and you simply dropped it so this is one time instant where the body is here this is another time instant when the body is here all right the body has dropped it's free falling by you know a height delta h between these two time instants why is the body going down on its own due to the force of gravity so basically the force is not visible to you but there is a force of gravity in the downward direction which is causing the motion of this body correct now if this body was made to reach from here to here by some other path maybe like this if the body was here and you decided to move the body like this to bring it here, how much will be the change of potential energy in this case? In this case also the change in potential energy will be mg delta h itself, correct? Because when you are moving the body down along the force of gravity, then the work done by the force of gravity is positive, right? But when the body is moving against the force of gravity, then the work done by the force of gravity is negative. So even if you go further down, but when you come up, so extra work that you get will get nullified when you bring it up, all right? But it is not true for all the types of forces. For example, friction. Do you think if you have a body, so if you have a body like this, 
and you move this body from this point to this point in one case and in the other case what you do is that you rotate the body and you move the body at many random places before bring it here. So in both these cases the work done by the friction will not be same. The more body moves the more will be the force of friction or to give you a simple example when you reverse the direction of body the friction work means the friction the work that has been done by the friction force on this body does not come back to the body in this case when the body was moving down when the body was moving down and when it was going up the work done by the gravity was opposite in sign in both the cases when it was going down the work done by gravity was mg delta h but when body was going up then work done was uh, work done by gravity was minus mg delta h correct but in this case in the case of friction it's never going to happen that force of friction will start supporting the body that work is always going to be negative and that will not depend just upon initial and final condition it will depend upon the actual path traveled right so those forces are called as non conservative forces non-conservative forces friction is a good example of this force and force of gravity is a conservative force all right now let's discuss about work energy theorem the statement of this theorem says that whatever will be the net work done on a body by the all the forces that are acting on, on that body that will be equal to the change in kinetic energy of that body you listen to it again whatever will be the net work done by the net forces on any given particle or on any given body that will be equal to change in kinetic energy of the body now i am sure it sounds confusing to you to most of the students when they hear the statement first it sounds confusing that how the net work done by all forces is only considering the change in kinetic energy why not the potential energy right don't worry just uh, follow what i am uh, telling you and in next few minutes your confusion will be clear okay so this is what the statement of this uh, theorem is work net is change in kinetic energy is equal to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy right now we'll do two things firstly we will derive this mathematically and then conceptually i will explain you what this means so if we talk about mathematical derivation it's v square minus u square is equal to 2 as from the equations of motion right and acceleration can be written as force net force divided by mass right and if you multiply this whole equation by m by 2 so what you will get half mv square minus half mu square is equal to 2 and m will get cancelled net force multiplied by the distance up to which it traveled and what is that this is nothing but let me write it on the left hand side this is nothing but net work done right f net multiplied by s correct so this is the mathematical derivation of this but i am sure the confusion is still in your mind that why only potential why only kinetic energy is coming here what about the potential energy right so to clear that confusion focus on the word net here the net force uh, the net work done by the net forces that is the key look consider an example where there is a uh, this uh, uh, block of mass resting on the surface all right so at that point if the mass is resting on the surface its potential energy is zero kinetic energy is zero now what we did is that we start to lift this off with a constant velocity all right so what we are effectively doing how much work we are doing if i roughly ask you forget about this theorem how much work i am doing on the body if i am lifting this up with a constant velocity whatever work i am doing will be change will be equal to the change in its energy law of conservation of energy e to minus e1 you can uh, delta e is equal to basically work so how much work am i doing is equal to change in energy of this body change in energy of this body is equal to its potential energy change plus change in kinetic energy correct initially it was at a zero kinetic energy but we started to lift it with a constant velocity 
So there will be some change in kinetic energy that we have given to this body and obviously there will be a change in potential energy because its height is increasing from the datum. Correct? But now look at this from the point of view of this theorem. From this theorem what it says? It says net work done by the net forces. Right? It is not talking about the work done by us. The work that we considering where potential energy is also coming that is specifically the work done by us. That is not the net work done. Who is the other player other than us? Gravity. Right? Gravity is acting in a downward direction. And when you are lifting the mass up, what will be the work done by the gravity? The work done by, by the gravity will be minus mg delta h. Correct? I told this in the concept of conservative and non-conservative forces. And when the body is moving along the direction of gravity, work done is mg delta h by the gravity. The work done by the gravity is mg delta h. But when you are moving it against the force of gravity, then the work done is minus mg delta h. And now you apply this work energy theorem. What it says? The work done by us plus the work done by gravity. Only these are the two players when the body is lifting up. This is equal to change in kinetic energy of the body. Correct? Now, how much is the work done by the gravity? It is minus mg delta h. Minus mg delta h. Or you can write it as minus of delta p e. Minus of delta P E. True. And you bring that on the right hand side. So what you will get? Work done by S is delta K E plus delta P E. So it's the same statement. This statement is the same statement that we will get if we simply apply the law of conservation of energy without thinking much here and there. Right. But it doesn't mean that this theorem is incorrect. This is totally correct. So the key point in this theorem is that the work done that you are considering should be the net work done by the net forces. Correct? That will be equal to change in kinetic energy. Look at it from other perspective. Let's consider this case from the perspective when there is a block and you are simply lifting it up at a constant velocity. So it is a constant velocity motion going on. Correct? Now you apply this funda. What will be the net work done? Equal to change in kinetic energy. But when this is moving with a constant velocity, then there is no change in kinetic energy, right? Delta K is change in kinetic energy. I am considering that this was moving only from the beginning. It's a separate case from this case. I am assuming that from the beginning it is moving at a constant velocity. Any two points I am considering in this motion. So between those two points, change in kinetic energy will be zero since it's moving at a constant velocity. So it means that net work done will be equal to zero. And how much is the net work done? Work done by us minus change in potential energy which is work done by gravity. So what does it tell us? It tell us that work done by us is equal to work done by us is equal to change in potential energy only when this is zero. This is second case when it is moving at a constant velocity. Any two points I picked since velocity is constant so change in kinetic energy is zero. If change in kinetic energy is zero, net force uh, means net work done by net forces, by all the forces are zero. And net work done includes the work done by us plus work done by gravity which is minus of delta PE which we already know. So it gives us that work done by us is simply equal to change in potential energy. Our work is not changing the kinetic energy, it's constant. You got the point? So the reason why students are confused in this is mainly because they don't understand exactly what this net work and net force means. Because as I have already told you that in order to solve numericals, you don't need to even know this theorem. I know students who don't even know this theorem, but still they are able to solve all the equations because it's essentially law of conservation of energy only, right? But if you, even if you want to apply this theorem anywhere, you can easily do that. All you need to do is you need to identify all the players. All the players means all those factors which are, you know, applying some force. And then add all the work done by them and equate that to change in kinetic energy. That's it. You don't even need to look at all any of the other factors. Alright. But even if you don't feel comfortable in this theorem, you don't have to bother at all. This is nothing but law of conservation of energy itself. So if you are comfortable directly in applying law of conservation of energy, 
that whatever is the change in energy total energy change in total energy is equal to whatever work has been uh, you know done by the body or on the body that is going to also work because essentially both of these concepts are same all right